Hi, Chris. Hello, how are we? I'm good. Thank you for joining me. No um, would you like to would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, so my name is Chris Remkis. I am uh, Australian. I was a gymnast. So I've just recently retired at the age of 25. So I've been doing gymnastics since I was five. Uh, started high performance when I was 12. I moved into state in 2015 to kind of pursue my sporting career. Uh, and then, so I am a Commonwealth Games gold medalist. I've won a couple of World Cups as well, uh, internationally. I've been Australian champion on the floor, vault, pommel. So I guess those have kind of been my highlights throughout my sporting career. That's an impressive career, especially for someone who's only 25. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so how would you share with us what your journey with mental health has been? It's been interesting. It's been up and down. Uh, I think most recently, before I like retired, I have been struggling a little bit. I think for the most part of just trying to find myself and where I wanted to be with sport and outside of sport, I kind of lost myself because I wasn't too sure what I wanted to do. I kind of struggled with training, uh, with how I was progressing and how I felt like how I was, I was progressing as well. And sometimes the environment can be a bit challenging as well. Sometimes it's a bit hard. Sometimes you feel like alone. Sometimes you feel like you're doing too much. Sometimes I felt like I was doing it to please other people rather than myself. So at that point, it was more so a struggle just trying to find where I was. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I feel like, especially for athletes, like we have this sometimes sense of identity that's so tied up in being an athlete that once we have, like some people times like you'll get injured or like you'll retire or, and then you'll kind of start to wonder like, well, who am I outside of my sport? Like what, like these sport can't be your only identity. Yes, that's it. Uh, and that was another thing as well, because um, I've dedicated my whole life to gymnastics. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing at all, um, but it's just hard when, you know, you, you're almost at an end point with your sporting career and you're not 100% sure what you want to do or where you want to go afterwards because the only thing you know is sport and the only thing you can relate to is sport. Um, so it's sometimes hard for people that were in the same position or is in the same position as me where they didn't get much of a real world experience during their sporting time. So they get a little bit lost, I think. Yeah, yeah, I totally get that. Now, do you, as an athlete, how did your mental health kind of influence your like training, competing, and then how did like your sport in turn affect your mental health? I think a lot of it kind of came in waves. Uh, with gymnastics, I'm not too sure how well you know the sport. Um, but I mean, like any other sport, it's quite high demanding. Uh, for myself, we, we've trained like 30, 30 plus hours a week, you know, morning, afternoon, um, practically from Monday to Friday. And it takes a toll. You know, you're, you're putting in the hours. You know, you're doing all these extracurricular things as well, um, just trying to stay in that peak physical shape. Uh, and in doing that, it kind of just takes a mental strain sometimes. You know, you feel burnt out. Um, a lot of the times you enjoy it, but a lot of the times it's kind of like, you know, you don't get a rest sometimes. And then you just mentally just drained and it's just hard to kind of keep motivation with training um and then some, like 
being a high performance athlete as well or like an athlete in general sometimes you've got to make sacrifices you know you can't really spend time with friends and family as much because you're quite dedicated to sport so that kind of like takes away some of the fun um as well yeah 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 for sure what do you think your biggest struggle has been over the years my biggest struggle would probably have been just kind of finding my own place in, well, I guess on this earth, uh, you know, because again, I've been doing gymnastics for a very long time uh, and I kind of got to a point where I wasn't sure whether I was still in the sport because I enjoyed it or whether I was to staying in the sport because that's what I knew and I was almost doing it to make someone else happy. Um, so that was probably like the main thing for me. Yeah, I feel like a lot of athletes can probably relate to that as well. And also just even like, for example, university students where you're kind of forced into choosing like this one path. And I mean, I know lots of people who don't know exactly what they want to do with their life. and yeah. Sometimes, yeah, they can feel a bit lost as well, just not sure what their purpose is or what they're supposed to be doing. And they, they feel like they kind of have to like make a decision, but they don't know. Yeah, absolutely. And I, yeah, I just find that sometimes it can be very difficult. Um, and then in terms of that, because you're not too sure with yourself, so you're not too sure who to turn to, you know, and I think that's a big factor with mental health sometimes is not knowing who you can talk to about things like that. And now, how have like family, friends, teammates, like how have they kind of played a role in your mental health? Uh, they played a big role, uh, definitely supportive. I think having people around you definitely helps a lot, you know. Um, it's things that bother you that you can express to your friends or family without judgment. Um, sometimes it's hard because the things that you want to discuss with them, they may not agree or um, they may give you advice or say something that you don't want to hear. But sometimes it's something that you need to hear. You know, mm -hmm. it's not always the nicest, but it can be like the right thing. Um, so yeah, they've definitely played a big role in my in my lifetime. And then, what other tools or strategies have you used to kind of help your own mental health? I because one of the thing was as well in my career that I struggled a lot. Um, not only like finding myself, but also tumbling or like doing my skills because I would have a lot of mental blocks um, so I would pull out of a lot of skills and that would obviously impact my training so some of the methods would be that I have done is obviously I would be talking to a psychologist um, a sports psychologist and some of the methods would be maybe backtracking so if I was doing a harder skill that was I felt like I haven't prepared myself for, I know I've done a hundred times, but for some reason I'm scared to do it. Uh, I've backtracked, so I'd go to something a little bit simple as a drill and then kind of get confident in that and then build it back up from there. Uh, another thing I did was just jotting down some things like journaling. Journaling has been helpful as well. Uh, just jotting down, whatever really, whether it may be how the training session went, um, just putting down your little rins, you know, just something there, maybe something positive to kind of just keep me going. Yeah, I really like that. Now, just to wrap, wrap this all up, what words of advice would you give to someone who's currently struggling with their own mental health right now? That's, 
as hard as it may seem, sometimes you're not alone. There's always going to be somewhere there that will will help you and give you what you need, any advice or any help. And just to think not where you could be going or where you see yourself, but more the fact that where you come from, you know, sometimes it's hard to appreciate yourself a little, you know, because you're too busy thinking about almost now or the future. And, you know, like if you're struggling at that point and you just feel like you're going downhill, it's good to remind yourself, you know, like, yeah, maybe like at this point things might suck, but look at where you've been, you know, and it may have not been that far, but it's the little wins that count, you know, and that I think that you need to sometimes look at it that way. And again, with journaling, it's just maybe, maybe it's helpful sometimes just to jot down all your little wins, you know, and then that's something you can look back on as well to think not only have I gone this far, but all different things, all the little wins that I've done this week, you know, I've still done stuff to keep me going so yeah yeah I love that it's keeping track of like the little wins because sometimes yeah like as you said you get so caught up in kind of like the end goal or that final destination that you lose track of just how far you have come and so then it's easy like when you hit like a block in the road or you like plateau a bit or you're struggling and you feel like you're still so far away from your final goal you can look back and see, but look at what I have accomplished up until this point. Yeah, 100%. 100%. All right. Well, thank you so much for meeting with me and chatting about your mental health. And hopefully some others will be able to relate to your story and will maybe try some of your tips. I know I'm going to try your journaling tip, writing down my little accomplishments and victories at the end of each day. Perfect. Love to hear. Thank you for having me. Um, but yeah, I hope this video and your business will reach out to people um, and hope they get a better understanding that, you know, there's always help out there. All right. Thank you. Take care. Perfect. Thank you.